subscribe. Welcome back, y'all. Let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's homework. So we're starting off by looking at these different vectors. We're going to be adding, um, we're going to be adding some, multiplying some scalars, and just basically practicing the skills that we looked over in the in the lecture video. Um, now, same kind of deal with these PDFs. I'm not sure why it's it's coming out like this, but these little notations should be little arrows here, indicating that we're working with a vector. That looks pretty terrible. Um, but yeah, so letter A says we want to add vectors A and B. So vector A and vector B are defined right here, and they are currently written in linear combination form. But if you want to write them using um, component form, you would write it like this, 2 comma 5 and 7 negative 3. Now you can leave them in linear combination form. There's really not a big downside. I just personally prefer this uh, this notation. I just find it kind of easier to write and keep track of, but uh, really there's not one that's like better than the other. Um, so if I want to add these, the way I'm going to write this is 2 comma 5 and when I'm adding vectors, I kind of like to stack them like this so I can just add the corresponding columns like I want to add my horizontal column and my vertical column. Um, so I'm going to add these together. And here I've got 2 plus 7 is 9, and 5 plus negative 3 would be 2. So A plus B would be a vector that's going 9 units in the horizontal direction and two units going in the vertical direction. So if you're trying to visualize this, this is not asking you to actually sketch it out, but if you were to do something like that, um, you could see like two, five would be like two, oh, oops, like uh, two over and five up, so somewhere here. And this is just a rough sketch. Seven, negative three would be seven to the right, and then three down, okay? And so nine, two would be this resulting vector right here going back to the initial initial point and pointing at the end. So right here, that would be 9 comma 2. So this is just the visual representation of what's going on here. Um, and this would be your actual answer. Uh, okay, well, uh, letter B says if, so we're trying to find K, if A plus KB has an I component of 0. So I'm going to write this out. A is 2 comma 5. And we're going to say plus k times vector b, which is 7 comma negative 3. And we're saying that we want to find the value of, there we go, of k if this resultant, uh, this result, resultant vector has an i component of 0. So the first component is 0. And then the second component, we don't really care. Doesn't matter. Okay, because it's not asking us to satisfy any condition related to the, uh, the J component or the vertical component. So all we really want to know here is what does K have to be to make this true? Okay, so really we're just looking at our horizontal components here. This 2 plus K times 7 equals 0. Okay, so I'm just kind of showing you where these numbers are coming from. Now, if you want to write this in a more proper way, we would say 2 plus 7k equals 0. And now we're just solving for k. Okay, so we're solving a linear equation like you would in Algebra 1. Uh, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I would get 7k equals negative 2. And then when I divide both numbers by 7, or both sides by 7, Looks like I'm going to end up with a fraction here. I'm going to get k equals negative 2 sevenths. So that answers the question, um, which was to find k if you know this this uh, this combination of vectors and a, and a scalar um, has an i component of zero. There we go. Okay, uh, so let's look at letter C, which is saying A minus B. So we want to take A and subtract B. So we're going to set it up uh, pretty much exactly how we set up letter A. 
except instead of adding, we're going to subtract. So I'm going to change this plus to a minus. Okay, and these numbers obviously will be different. But we've got 2 minus 7, which is negative 5. And we have 5 minus negative 3, so that'd be like 5 plus 3, which is 8. And so the result here would be negative 5 comma 8. Let's try to drag all that, but couldn't quite, couldn't quite grab it all. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so let's take a look at D. Um, similar question to B, okay? We're basically trying to find K and try to fix this these little arrows as I go. It looks like it's the B that uh, is not getting formatted properly as I save this as a PDF, but... Uh, Anyway, um, so we're looking for k, but this time we're looking for the j component to be zero. Whereas in letter B, we were looking for the i component to be zero. Um, so in this case, we don't really care what the i component is. We only care that the, uh, the j is zero. So just to kind of set up our equation here, we've got a, which is, oops, wrong button. <laughs> okay, uh, two comma five plus k times, uh, what was b again? 7, negative 3. And we want that to equal a vector. Um, the i component could be anything, but we want this, the j component to be 0. Okay, so the equation we're going to throw together here is, you know, since we're just looking at this j component, is 5 plus k times negative 3 equals, this is supposed to be a parenthesis here, here we go, equals 0. So uh, let's go ahead and kind of clean up that equation. 5 plus k times negative 3, we can rewrite that as minus 3k equals 0. Um, and now we're just going to go through that solving process to get k. So subtract 5 from both sides. gives us negative 3k equals negative 5. And then uh, to finish this one off, we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And we get k equals another fraction here, 5 thirds. All right, so letter E is just asking you to multiply a scalar of two by vector A. Uh, so by now, almost have vectors A and B memorized. Uh, we've got two times vector A, which is two comma five. And so the way to multiply a scalar by a vector is to treat it like um, you would the distributive property. It's so really, that's kind of what's going on. If you were to write this vector as um, a linear combination like this kind, uh, like this style, it'll you can see the um, the distributive property kind of in action a little bit more accurately. But anyway, so you would multiply each of these components by two, and you would get four comma ten. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do G next, and we'll we'll do F and H back to back. Because g is just asking you to multiply a scalar 5 by the vector b, which was, what was that again? 7, negative 3. And so, same deal here. We're going to multiply the 5 both by 7 and by negative 3. So 35, comma, negative 15. Okay, so F and H are similar in that we're trying to find a unit vector in the direction of, um, in this case, A, and in this case, B. So we'll basically do the same process, one for each vector. And so what it's really asking for is, like with vector A, 2, 5, um, let me do a little sketch here, just to kind of give you an idea of what's happened. 1, 2, 3, 4, oh wait, what was it, 2, 5? Okay, so we only need to go to 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so this is what vector A looks like. It's 
sort of pointing at this this coordinate here and clearly this vector has a length or a magnitude uh, greater than one you know the one is going to be you know if it, it has a um, a length of one it it's it will end on a point on the unit circle so basically it would end like somewhere on here right all of these points on the unit circle are exactly one unit away from the origin so this one's obviously too, too long and what it's asking for is the unit vector um, that's going in that same direction so it's asking for oh, not a circle but a vector starting from the origin and pointing to this coordinate on the unit circle so um, so anyway, we're trying to find the, essentially what we're trying to find are the coordinates of where this vector ends and that will allow us to write the vector um, in either linear combination form or uh, component form. So how do we get it? How do we find this? Well, what we have to do is we first find the magnitude of this red vector, what is actually vector A. And we are going to essentially divide each component by that magnitude. So let's first calculate the magnitude of vector A. Okay, the way we do this is we're just trying to find essentially the length of this vector. So we'll just use Pythagorean theorem. Just imagine a right triangle right here. And uh, we know that this side length is two and this side length is um, five. So uh, the length of that vector would be the square root of two squared plus five squared. Let me just make sure that that one was right. Yeah, two, five, okay. So, uh, so here we go. So the, the magnitude of vector A is gonna be equal to the square root of two squared, which is four, plus five squared, which is 25, and four plus 25 is 29. So this is not giving us like our answer. Remember, we're not worried about, it's not asking what the magnitude is of this. We just have to find it in order to answer this question. So now what we do to find the unit vector in this given direct, uh, uh, in the direction of the given vector is we divide both the x component and the y component by root 29. So this unit vector in the direction of um, vector a will be not 2, 5, that's the original uh, vector A, but it'll be 2 divided by root 29, comma, 5 divided by root 29. Now, if I wanted you to estimate this, um, you know, if I said, oh, estimate to the nearest however many decimals, um, we, we would just put it in the calculator. So let's see roughly what this, this would actually equal. Um, so yeah, let's pull out the calculator, get an approximation here, and we'll say that it is approximately, uh, let's see, oh wait, I don't, I don't have it pulled up for you. <laughs> there we go, okay. So we've got 2 divided by root 29, alright, so we get about 371 thousandths and 5 divided by root 29 which is 928 thousandths all right so that's going to be uh you know the approximate unit vector uh, it kind of just depends what i ask you. you know i might just ask you for the uh, exact value which would be this um, and this would be the rounded values. Now you could test it if you're not like confident that you got the right answer. You could test it by doing the Pythagorean theorem again. Remember, we're trying to find a vector that has a length of one. So if we use the Pythagorean theorem using these uh, two dimensions, um, the 
the hypotenuse should be one. So let's see if we actually get one here. So this squared plus this squared, it might be off by a tiny bit because of rounding, but look, there we go. So exactly one. So that means we, we, we're, we have a high, um, should have a high degree of confidence that we got it right. Okay, so we're gonna do that same process for uh, letter H, but instead of finding the unit director in the direction of A, a unit vector in the direction of A, uh, we're gonna find a unit vector in the direction of B. So I'm actually just gonna copy all this and paste it down here because the work will be pretty much the same. Um, but let's see, so vector B was uh, seven negative three, so it's not even in this direction. Um, so seven, negative three, let's just erase this other one. We don't need that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then what was it negative three, right? Uh, yep. Okay, so there's negative one, negative two, and negative three. So the point that we're, the terminal point should be right there. And the vector will be, will look roughly like this. And so the unit vector, the one we're really trying to get is this guy right here. So first we've got to find the magnitude of vector B. So the magnitude of vector B will be seven squared plus, um, you could say negative three squared here. Um, you're also safe just saying three squared because you are squaring it either way. Um, but just to make sure I'm consistent here, I'll put negative three squared here. So the magnitude of vector B would be, see seven, ooh, we might need a calculator here. Let's see, seven squared is 49. Uh, three squared is nine, so maybe not. Okay, so this would be what, 54? All right, so I caught a little mistake here. I'm gonna to try to embed this in the video, we'll see how it turns out. Um, but look right here, uh, I made a mistake here. Seven squared is 49, and uh, negative three squared is nine, which does not add up to 54. <laughs> that is 58, isn't it? Okay, so that's gonna change a couple things here. I know I already did a bunch of problems here. You haven't seen that yet, but I'm gonna go through and, and edit those as we go too. So here, this should be seven over root 58, and this should be negative three over root 58. So uh, let's go ahead and throw that in the calculator. We can get the, uh, the correct decimals here. Seven divided by uh, root 58. There we go. Point. This is looking a little better. And then negative uh, three over root 58. Negative three point, okay. Three, so that's negative 0.39 would round up to four. Okay, so this, you know, I wanted to make that correction um, and I'll make the other corrections like immediately following the problems that got affected by this. Uh, so number number I or letter I rather is having us not only multiply vectors by a scalar but then combining them afterwards. Um, this one using subtraction and then K using addition. So I think I'll do the same thing here. Well, I'll, let's do I and K and then we'll do J and L. So here we've got. I'm just going to rewrite this using the vectors. Three times vector A, which is still two comma five, minus five times vector B, which is still seven comma negative three. So what we're going to do is we are going to distribute the three and distribute the negative five. So we can rewrite this as um, three times two is six, three times five is 15, so six comma 15. Um, and then we'll say plus, cause this is gonna, basically I'm sending the, the negative along with the number, so plus, um, negative five times seven is negative 35, and then negative five times negative three would be positive 15. So now I'm just adding these two vectors, which, you know, I kind of like showing the work like I did up here when we added, where we kind of stack them, and I'm gonna keep going with that. So 
if, if you don't find any benefit to organizing the work that way, you don't have to write it like that. Like if you can see here that I'm just gonna add my X components and my Y components, um, to just go ahead and do that and just be done with the problem. Um, but just for me, visually, it helps to rewrite this as 615 and then plus with the negative 3515 on the bottom. Just a, it's just a little tip, you know, a way how you can organize your work to make it just a tad bit more obvious what it is you're combining. So here we've got 6 plus negative 35. So that's going to be negative uh, 29. Is that right? Um, yes. Yes, I believe so. Um, Gosh, the, the amount of time that I questioned myself there, I'm going to go ahead and just type this in, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, very good. We got that. Um, and then, so negative 29, then 15 plus 15 is 30. So here we go. So that would be 3 times A minus 5 times vector B. K uh, works out kind of the same way, which is why I wanted to do these back to back. So we've got 2 times 2 comma 5 plus addition always ends up to be a little, a little bit easier. Um, 7 comma negative 3. There we go. Fix that real quick. And then um, and so now we're going to do the distributive property. We're going to multiply 2 by 2, 2 by 5. We're also going to multiply 3 by 7 and 3 by negative 3. And so that'll give me t uh, oops, 4 comma 10 plus, uh, let's see, oh, 21 comma 9, uh, nope, negative 9. All right, so now I'm going to stack them like I did up here. In fact, just to save a couple seconds here uh, so I don't create everything, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Uh, so we've got 410 plus 21, negative 9. So we've got 4 plus 21 is 25, and 10 plus negative 9 would be 1. So that would be your answer for K. All right. So. Um, going back up here, uh, letter J is asking for a unit vector in the opposite direction of A. Okay, so we've actually already found back up here a unit vector in this given direction. So I want to just kind of highlight this bit. I'm not going to copy everything because we, we don't need to show this exact same work here. But this right here is the... Um, uh, how did I do that? Okay, there we go. Um, the, so we've already found out the uh, the unit vector in the direction of A, which is this one right here. And so what we want is a vector in the opposite direction. So we already, we've already found these. Um, this is going to be the vector. Let me just make a note here. This was the unit vector in the direction of A. And so the one that should be going in the opposite direction is going to be this exact same thing except we're going to send this back down here so instead of going to the right 0.37 up 0.92 we're going to go to the left 0.37 and to down 0.92 so basically all you have to do here is just negate each um, uh, each component so you don't really have to do any new work you're just going to write this exact same thing except make them both negative so this should be negative, this should be negative. And if for some reason uh, I would ask it, ask for the answer in rounded form, you just same thing, just put negatives right here. So this would be 
unit ve uh, the unit vector. Oh gosh, come on, there we go. Uh, in the opposite direction of A. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Basically, it's asking for what we already found, but you know, it's it, they're talking about the vector that's going this way. Okay. So for the next problem, it's asking the same exact thing except for the one that's going the opposite direction of B. So instead of this little red vector, which we already found, we are going to find this little green vector. Okay, I'm not gonna write everything I did before, but uh, and, uh, our answer here is just gonna be basically, since this is positive negative, uh, the new one should be negative positive. So as a consequence of the error that I made above, um, you know, this should actually be negative seven over root 58, and this one should also be over root 58. So I just wanna make that correction real quick. Um, there's one more place where that happened and I'll, I'll address it when we get there. So M is asking for the magnitude of the difference between the vectors. Now, did we already calculate the difference? Uh, I'm thinking maybe we didn't. Yes, we did. Okay, and we found the sum. So we've already kind of done a little bit of the legwork that we will need to do for M and O. So for M, we're trying to find the magnitude of the difference. And back here in problem 1C, we already found what the vector was of the difference. So let's go ahead and just copy that over because we're gonna need that for this problem. So if this was like a unique problem, you'd have to find this difference first, but we already did that. So uh, if you're just kind of skipping around the video and want to know the answer to this one, if you want to see where this came from, go back to uh, where I talked about 1C. So this right here is gonna be A minus B. Try to do some little vector arrows up here. Oops. There we go. Um, so that that we've already found. Again, we did that in one C. We just triple check here. A minus B. Okay, five, negative five eight. All right. So assuming this is right, hopefully it is. Um, now we're going to find the magnitude. So we are going to find the magnitude of this difference. And so all we need to do here is just apply the Pythagorean theorem, like we found, like how we found the magnitude before. We found that on a couple of problems already, like when we need it, when we found the unit vector. Actually, maybe that was it. Those two unit vector problems. Um, so we've already kind of talked about how to calculate this, or you know, visually, like why we're using the Pythagorean theorem at all. Um, but in the end, we've got uh, negative five squared plus eight squared. So negative five squared would be 25. And eight squared would be 64. Let's see, 25 and 64, that'd be 89. Uh, yeah, okay. That's it. <laughs> we don't have to go any further with this. We found the magnitude of the difference. And then O is asking for us to find the magnitude of the sum. So we'll do exactly what we did here, except we will use the vector from when we did the sum. So let's go back, since we already did that work, and look at the sum. Yeah, it was 9, 2. So uh, if you want me to go into more detail on how I got 9, 2, just check out that very first problem from the video. So 9, 2. All right, and how we find the magnitude is uh, the exact same way as we did in M. So we're just going to have the magnitude of 9, 2 equal the square root of 9 squared plus 2 squared. Again, we're just using Pythagorean theorem here. And so the magnitude of 9, 2 would be, this is... Uh, 
81 plus 4, uh, which would be 85. There you go. So that's the magnitude of O, of uh, the, the, the sum of the two uh, vectors. Let's just throw in that little arrow there. I'm going to try to hit all these as we go. Um, well, it looks like I missed one here too. Okay, so N and P are asking for a vector of length 10 in the direction of each of those individual vectors. So the strategy for a problem like this is to first find the unit vector in that direction, and then we'll just multiply it by 10. Now we already found the unit vectors of each one of these, um, and we wrote that up here, right? Uh, so let me just go ahead and copy that since we already have that work done. But if you want me to kind of go into more detail on how we came up with this unit vector, check out F and H from uh, earlier. So the unit vector in the direction of A is this. And so we could say that, let's just copy this again, not the unit vector, but a vector of length 10 in that direction Um, we, we can find that by just multiplying each component of the unit vector by 10. Because basically all we're doing is we're, we're taking this, this uh, blue vector, right? And we're gonna multiply by 10. We're gonna scale it out so it's 10 times as long. So we're basically gonna stack like 10 of these on each other. So you have one plus one plus one, you know, all the way to 10. And so that um, uh, whatever the coordinate we end up with is gonna be that, that vector. So we just multiply each one of these by 10. Um, so let me just kind of show you the work here at least once so you can kind of see where the answer is coming from. But we're gonna do 10 times this unit vector. And so we'll say that that equals 10 times two is 20 and 10 times five is 50. The, the arithmetic's not too bad. And then, so there you go, that's your, that's your answer. You can plug it in the calculator like I did that first one to get a rounded answer. Um, I'm not gonna bother doing that for every single one. I just, you know, if you wanna see what I mean by a rounded answer, go back to where I worked out F and H and I kind of talk about, uh, I show you how to input that into the calculator. Um, there are no chicks really, so uh, just, uh, you know, put it in like you uh, would think to. All right, so if we find a vector of length 10 in the direction of B, we're gonna do basically the same thing. Um, as we did in N, except we will use the unit vector in the direction of B here rather than A. So let's go back up to where we found that. I think that was, what was the letter? H, uh, right here, the unit vector. So let's go ahead and replace that. And we'd still want it to be uh, length 10. So we're still gonna multiply this by 10. Um, we just wanna multiply the correct vector by 10. And so 10 times uh, seven is gonna be 70, and then 10 times negative three is gonna be negative 30. Here's a, hopefully the last correction here. Um, again, this 54, um, I kept copying and pasting again and again. And so this really be uh, 58 here. All the way down, all these denominators. Okay. So now we got that cleared up, let's go on to the next one. All right, so wow, that was probably the longest number one <laughs> that I think I've put on a homework. Um, that was like, I don't even know how many problems that was, but it was not, not just one. Okay, let's take a look at number two. All right, so for 2a, we've got, we're, we're trying to solve this uh, algebraic equation here, and uh, not only was B's notation messed up here, but it looks like U and W kind of suffered the same fate here with the export to PDF. Not sure what the deal is there, but anyway, saying find X so that U plus X equals W. And so what we're trying to do is say, all right, well, U, which is um, 206 plus something, we'll call it We'll just call it um, uh, x1, x2, and x3 is probably the way to go. I 
okay, equals uh, w, which is negative 7 minus 3 and then 10. So uh, you really want to kind of interpret this as three separate equations because um, what we're trying to do is figure out what this vector x needs to be. So we need to figure out what the horizontal, the vertical, and the three-dimensional component is. And so we're going to say like 2 plus something is negative 7, 0 plus something is negative 3, and 6 plus something is negative 10. So what I'm going to do is just write out those equations down here. 2 plus, oops, let's do it as an equation here. So 2 plus the first component um, of vector x equals negative 7. And we are going to have to solve each one of these separately. So let's uh, get, get some space going here. Um, OK, so there's the first one. Then the second one will be 0 plus the second component of vector x. And that should equal negative 3. Let's move this a little bit more out of the way. There we go. And then the third one will be 6 plus the third component of vector x equals 10. Um, OK, so we're going to solve each one of these independently. Um, here we are going to subtract 2 from each side. And that's going to give us uh, the first component of vector x to be negative 7 minus 2 would be negative 9. Over here, plus 0 doesn't really change anything. So we just have the second component is negative 3. And then finally, the third component, we would want to subtract 4 from both sides. So you would get uh, 10 minus 6 equals 4. So these would be the three components. Um, and so my final answer here, you know, it's asking what is vector x? We would say that vector x equals negative 9, negative 3, 4. And so if we were to, we could always double check and add here, but if we were to add vector u to vector x, we should get vector w. Um, I'm just going to clean this up, make it a little easier to read. OK, so I'm just going to kind of draw some lines here to kind of separate out what we did. Here we go. OK, so um, a b is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, c will be very similar. Really, all of these are going to be set up, you know, A through D are going to be set up in a similar way. Uh, e, we're just finding the magnitude. So um, let's just start with a B. Okay, so we're going to kind of do a very similar thing here, except we got X. So let me just copy all this since here we've got V, oops, which is 1, 4, negative 1. plus 2 times x equals the 0 vector. OK, so just 0, 0, 0. Let me pull this over so you guys can see it. There we go. So yeah, 0, 0, 0. OK, so we're going to have three equations here, just like we did on letter A. Just kind of make this a little more divvied up here. Not a ton of room to work all this. OK, yeah. Note, note to self for next time. Put some more space in for these problems. OK, so we got 1 plus the first component, uh, or 2 times the first component, equals 0. And then for the second one, yeah, don't want to forget this 2 here. That is, that is there. So 4 plus 2 times the second component equals 0. What's going on here? There we go. And then finally, we've got negative 1 uh, plus 2 times the third component equals 0. Just gonna kind of 
section off my work here. Um, okay, so in the first equation, we get the first component is equal to zero minus one would be negative one divided by two would be negative one half. And for the second component, we'd have zero minus four would be negative four divided by two would be negative two. And then the third one would be zero plus one would be one divided by two, that's positive one half. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've got our vector here. Or at least we have all the components we need to write the vector. Let me zoom out a little bit to, nope, there's literally no space here. Uh, okay, well, I'm just gonna like kind of squeeze it down in here. So vector x is negative one half comma negative two comma positive one half. I, yeah, I'm gonna just take a second to shrink all this so that I can actually fit it. And there you go, okay. Barely got, barely got it in there. Um, okay, so that would be your, your answer to B. Uh, let's take a look at C. So for C, uh, we've got a similar problem. We're just multiplying, it looks like, both vectors um, in this equation by a, uh, uh, by a scalar, like we did in B. But with B, we just did one of the vectors. So I'm not going to change a ton about how we solve this. Um, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> a little too much there. All right, there we go. So here we've got 2 times u. So u here is the 206. I do recall, let's see. Yep. I'll just leave it up there so we can see it. Plus 2 times x, okay, so that's just this, equals w. So negative 7, negative 3, and 10. So we're going to set up our three equations uh, in the same way we did it on the last couple where we're just looking at the individual, the corresponding components here. So we'll have like two times two plus two times x1 equals negative seven. And then we'll have two times zero plus two times x2 equals negative three and so forth. So let's set up those equations. First one would be two times two uh, plus two times x1 equals negative seven. And as we know, two times two is four. Okay, so I just wanna clean that up just a little bit to give us some room here, because didn't give you much space to work these out. Uh, so the next one would be two times zero plus two times uh, the second component equals negative three. Uh, zero times two, as we know, is zero, and zero plus anything is just the anything, so really we're just left with this. And then the third equation will be two times six, right? So right now I'm on uh, the third component, plus two times x3 equals 10. And just to simplify a bit here, two times six is 12. So these are gonna be the three equations that we need to solve before getting our final answer. Um, okay, well, let's just make this a little more sectioned off here. That well, looks pretty good. A um, <laughs> little messy, but you gotta gotta work with what you got. So uh, for this first one, we are going to subtract four from both sides. So what we'll get there is two times x one equals negative seven minus four. It's gonna be negative eleven, and then so negative eleven divided by two would just be that negative eleven halves. 
So that would be our first component. Our second component is going to be negative 3 divided by 2, which will just leave like that, negative 3 halves. And then finally, our third component is going to be, uh, let's see, we'll have, we would have 2 times x3, and then we would subtract 12 from both sides to give us negative 2, and then divide both sides by 2 to get our third component is negative 1. So all three components here are going to be negative. And so our final answer here would be negative 11 halves, comma, negative 3 halves, comma, negative 1. All right, so there's C. Just notice that uh, made a little error here. Um, so what happens when you get a little copy paste happy? This should be a three, right? Because this says plus three times x. And so that's gonna affect this coefficient, unfortunately, in every single one of these. Um, but really what ends up happening is this, we, we end up dividing by three every time. And so really we should get negative 11 thirds, negative three over three, which would just be negative one. And then for this last one, we would have uh, negative two thirds, right? Because 10 um, minus 12 would be negative two divided by three. So these should be the right, that should be the right one. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's, let's uh, go back in time and do uh, D here. Now let's take a look at D. So D says find x so that w minus 4x uh, is this, this vector that's just undefined elsewhere. Um, so we'll go ahead and set it up just like we did C. Actually, it's probably more like B since the first one doesn't have a, um, a coefficient. Okay, so we just have w, which is negative seven, negative three, 10, minus four times the component equals this 13, negative seven, negative 19. I'm definitely gonna have to make that a little smaller, make it fit. Uh, okay, so just like all the other ones, we're gonna set up, you know, same exact strategy here. We're gonna set up an equation for each component, uh, solve them individually, and then, uh, and then write our vector. So, in fact, I think what I might do is just copy and paste this. No, it's just, that's gonna to be too messy. Okay, well, um, can I undo that? How, how far back can I go? Oh, goodness. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Oh gosh. All right, are we good? Okay, yeah, that looks good. Okay, whew. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so forget that idea. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just type it all out separately. So we've got negative seven, oops, negative seven minus four times uh, x sub one, the first component, equals 13. So that's our first equation. Let's make it a little smaller to make it fit here. And then our second equation will be how big did I make that? 14? Let's try to get the default here. So I don't have to change it every time. Is we've got negative 3 minus 4 times uh, x sub 2 equals negative 7. And then the last one will be, uh, let's see, 10 minus four times x sub three equals negative 19. So we'll solve these individually for x1, x2, and x3. Uh, so for the first one, we've got, our first step would be to add seven to both sides. 
And so we would get negative 4x1 equals 13 plus 7 is 20. And then when we divide both sides by negative 4, we would get uh, x1 is negative 5. For the second component, we would start by adding 3 to both sides. And so we would get negative 4 times the second component equals negative 7 plus 3 would be negative 4. And then dividing both sides by negative 4 would just give you 1. And then here we would have uh, we would have to subtract 10 from both sides. So negative 19 minus 10 would be negative 29. And then dividing both sides by 4, uh, that's not going to divide evenly. So we're going to have to just write it as a fraction. Um, so x there would be negative 29 over negative 4. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So you just end up with 29 over 4. All right, so our final answer here for part B is going to be negative 5, positive 1, and then positive 29 over 4. All right, so those took a, a bit of work here because really for each one you had to solve three separate equations. Uh, e, we're just going to find the magnitude of each one, so that one shouldn't take as long. All right, so let's take a look at number three here. Uh, it says give a sketch of the vector in standard position and then find um, the measure of the angle formed by uh, the vector in the positive x-axis. In other words, we're trying to find the direction angle here. So. Um, vector v in part a is 1 comma 2 so if we're going to do a little sketch here uh, 1 2 is going to be in the first quadrant which is nice because when we go to use that formula uh, we can just use it directly in quadrant 1 let's see 1 2 would be somewhere right here uh, in quadrant 1 um, the reference angle is the same as the angle that we're trying to find the direction angle. So what we really want is this angle right here. Okay. And so to find that angle, we're going to say that, uh, let's just call it theta. And we'll say theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x, so in this case, 2 over 1. This is going to be something that we're going to throw in the calculator uh, because uh, 2 is not going to be a ratio that we're going to find uh, easily on our unit circle. Uh, so just have the calculator ready to go. Let me go ahead and pull mine up too. All right, so we're going to have the inverse. Let me make sure I'm in degrees first, uh, which I'm not. So good thing I checked. Uh, okay, so now we're in degrees. And we're going to do the inverse tangent of 2 over 1. So we get uh, about 63 degrees. Okay, So theta, and we'll say approximately here, is approximately 63 degrees. OK, um, letter F. We're going to do, basically for all of these, we're going to do the exact same thing. Um, the only thing we need to look out for is if we're in a quadrant other than quadrant one, like if we're in quadrant two or three, we got to add 180 degrees. And if we're in quadrant four, we add 360. So if you want a little bit more explanation about that, go back to the lecture video where we kind of go over why you do that. Um, so uh, letter F, I'm just going to kind of, wow, the lettering here is all over the place. A, F, B, G, C, H. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, but anyway. So this is also going to be in quadrant one, so we don't need to add anything. Um, I'm going to do a little sketch here. So two, now root three is going to be in between. Um, you know, square root of four is two, square root of one is one. So it's going to be in between one and two. So I guess that's as close as I need to get here. So two comma root three is going to be, that's about 1.7 ish. So we're looking for this angle right here. It's looking like, just from my sketch, it should be a little bit less than 63. Maybe it's like 45, 40, 35, somewhere, somewhere in that general vicinity. 
uh, but let's go ahead and compute everything. So we want the inverse tangent of root 3 over 2, which uh, it seems like that should be, uh, that, that's a familiar number, but that's not going to be something that we're going to find on our unit circle, unfortunately. Um, if it was like cosine or sine, we would, but not tangent. So anyway, let's go ahead and type that in. We've got the inverse tangent of root 3 over 2. So again, expecting something between like 30 and 50 maybe. And we get 41 degrees roughly, so that sounds pretty, pretty good. Okay, well let's look at B. Uh, B, it looks like we're going to be in quadrant 2. Ah, come on, there we go. So uh, quadrant 2, let's move that over a little bit. Uh, we've got negative 1, comma 2. So our vector is going to be over here. Now if we just straight up use that uh, inverse tangent, it's actually going to give us this angle right here, which is not what we want. That's the reference angle. What we really want is this angle right here. So we will have to add 180 to the, the formula that we're using. So we're going to say that theta is the inverse tangent of ne or 2 over one, uh, negative 1. So let's go ahead and type that in. And then, oh, and then we got to add, of course, 180. So let's type that in and see what we get here. So the inverse tangent of 2 divided by 1. Oh, oops, negative 1. Not bad. OK, so we get this number, which is that negative angle measure that we see right here. And then we're going to add 180 to get the real direction angle here. Uh, in standard position, and so we get about 116, rounds up to one, um, 117. Okay, so there's B, and then all the way over to G, and then C, and then H. Uh, again, not really sure what happened with the uh, the numbering or the lettering there. Um, no biggie. Okay, so here, uh, again, we're in quadrant two, so we are going to be adding 180 like we did over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and start our sketch. That is part of the problem here to, to give the sketch. Um, it doesn't need to be super accurate. Just make sure for sure you're in the right quadrant and then just do the best you can as far as estimating where it goes. So negative one and then root two is going to be in between one and two. Um, so our vector will be somewhere like here maybe. And again we're looking for this angle right here. Should be greater than 90. Okay, so just by doing the eyeball test, looks like it should be pretty close to this other one we did over here. So, you know, if it's a, maybe a little bit more, uh, it's a little hard to tell. Maybe it's like 120, 125, something like that. Uh, maybe, we, I mean, it should be pretty close. It should be pretty close, maybe a little bit more. So let's see what we get. Um, let's go ahead and copy our work here, and especially the one with the plus 180, because we need to do that. Um, okay. So here we've got the inverse tangent of um, root 2 over negative 1. And so we will uh, type that into the calculator and then we'll add 180 as well. So the inverse tangent of root 2 uh, divided by negative 1 plus 180, and we get about 125. So that was, that's roughly where I was kind of expecting it to be. All right, and then we've got uh, 2 comma 1. Um, this should probably be a smaller angle than any of the ones we've seen so far. It's in quadrant 1, so we don't need to do the plus 180 stuff uh, because the reference angle is the same as the angle we want in quadrant 1. So if I'm just going to do the eyeball test here, I'm going to say, I don't know, like 15 degrees, maybe 20. A little tough to say, especially if uh, we're just sketching, but somewhere, it should be pretty small. Definitely less than 45. 
So let's go ahead and type this in. We've got the inverse tangent of 1 half. So in the calculator, let's go ahead and do that. Inverse tangent of 1 half. And there you go, we get 20, about 27 degrees. So not a big one. And then uh, negative one zero. Now I wanna do the sketch on this one because I feel like you don't really need the calculator here, okay? Which you might be thinking, okay, well, let me type that in. But the inverse tangent of zero, negative one, we're gonna, we're gonna get uh, tangent zero, uh, or inverse tangent of zero. But let me just show you how you don't really need to do the, uh, you don't really need the calculator here. Uh, let's get rid of that calculator, there we go. So negative one zero is gonna be right along that negative x-axis. Okay, right there. So hopefully you already know what this angle is gonna be. It's pretty clear, it's, it's pretty obvious it's gonna be 180. And really if you had uh, used the formula, you'd get that too. But you know, don't don't get locked down to thinking, oh, I have to use the formula. You know, uh, if you can figure it out, but less, especially if it's on one of the axes, um, there's, don't waste your time going to the calculator. So here we can actually say that theta is exactly 180. There we go. Okay. So there's number three. Uh, let's take a look at number four. Last page. This has been a long homework, huh? <laughs> Oops. Uh, it says let vector y be a vector in the plane in standard position so that it has length. And it looks like we're missing some bars here. This should be the magnitude. And we're saying that it's equal to r. Okay, so basically it looks like on these problems, they're giving us the magnitude and they're giving us the direction angle. And they want us to actually write, um, write, the, uh, write the vector in component form. So you can go back and review the uh, the notes video uh, if you want more explanation. But basically, how you come up with the vector here is it's going to be um, well. Let me just type it out here. It's going to be uh, the magnitude of the vector. So in this case, r. Okay, because it's saying the magnitude of the vector is r here, times the cosine of the direction angle. In this case, we're calling it theta. And then the y component should be r times sine of the direction angle. So, oops. So this is going to be the little formula that we use. Um, and so, for each one of these, we're just going to plug the numbers in and let the calculator uh, do the heavy lifting, um, unless it's unless the angle happens to be something on the unit circle, in which case we won't need to use uh, the calculator. So for a, in fact, let me just go ahead and I'm going to fill in all these, so I don't have to. Go back and do that later. Okay, so um, for letter A, we've got 310 times the cosine of, get out of the way, 63 degrees. And we've got 310 times the sine of 63 degrees. So we'll just type both of those into the calculator. Um, Let's pull that back up. So we've got 310 times the cosine of 63 degrees. And just double checking, make sure I'm still in degrees. Yes, I am. Okay. And then 310 times the sine of 63 degrees. And those are going to be the two components of our vector. So 310 times cosine 63 is uh, 140 point, we'll say 737. And then the other one would be 276.212. Uh, so that would be our vector. Okay, this one has a magnitude of 310 and a direction angle of 63 degrees. So all these are gonna be worked out the same way, um, except for it looks like some of these are gonna be ones on the unit circle like this next one. Um, so you would use the unit circle to, to help you with that one. So let's pull away the calculator, we've got r, which is 20, times the cosine of pi over 2. Where's my pi? There it is. 
and 20 times the sine of pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 is going to be 0. Okay, Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Right, so we've got 20 times 0 and 20 times 1. So we'll just have 0 and 20. So as you can see, like it's a lot easier to, to use the unit circle to evaluate this rather than, I mean, you could still type it in. Make sure, you know, with the pies that you're in radians rather than degrees. So you're going to have to be switching back and forth. But if you're using the unit circle, it can go a lot faster. Uh, so letter C is going to be a lot more like A, where we will for sure have to use the calculator. Um, so for this one, we've got 42.58 times the cosine of 83.6 and 42.58, it seems like just random decimals here, 83.6, really just making sure that you can uh, compute this accurately. So let's go ahead and let the calculator do the calculating here. We've got 42.58 times the cosine of 83.6 and 42.58 times the sine of 83.6. Okay, so that first one is going to be 4.746 and the next one is 42.31 rounds up to five. All right, good. Uh, the next one, we won't need a calculator. Um, you can use a calculator, but if you do, make sure you're in radians for this next one uh, because this five pi over six is in radians. So if you're not using a calculator, you can just say, hey, what's the cosine of five pi over six? Hopefully after a semester of trigonometry, you're uh, quite comfortable coming up with this value here. Okay, so at 5 pi over 6, uh, the cosine value should be, let me think about this, negative root 3 over 2. And then for the sine, of 5 pi over 6, we should get 1 half. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, wait, and this should be negative root 3 over 2. Almost made a mistake there. So 100 divided by 2 is going to be 50. So this will be negative uh, 50 root 3. And then half of 100 is just 50. All right, so there's D. Uh, let's move on to E. For letter E, we've got our magnitude is 175, and our direction angle is 37 degrees. So we'll go ahead and compute those. Just make sure I'm still in degrees, looks good. Oops. So 175 times the cosine of 37 and then 175 times the sine of 37. So our horizontal component is roughly one. Oh, you didn't see my bad. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we've got, where was I? One, uh, 139.761 as our horizontal component and our vertical component looks like is 105.318. For letter F, looks like we get another one that has the unit circle, that has a value on the unit circle, so we can uh, go ahead and hide our little calculator. We don't need that for this one. Um, we've got root eight as our uh, magnitude and our direction angle is 7 pi over 4. OK, 
Okay, so cosine of seven pi over four. You know, seven pi over four is that angle measure in the fourth quadrant. And the cosine of that would be positive root two over two. And then the sine of seven pi over four would be negative root two over two. clean that up a little bit. Okay, so to simplify this, we've got root 2 times root 8, which is root 16. And root 8 times negative root 2 will be negative root 16. And uh, luckily, root 16, that's a perfect square. So root 16 is just 4. This is going to simplify really nicely, actually. And then, uh, well, 4 divided by 2, we could simplify that. That's just 2. And so we get 2 comma negative 2. That one's been the cleanest answer so far, I think. Yeah, well, I guess other than B, B, B worked out pretty nicely too. Okay, so G uh, has a magnitude that is equal to 53 and 42 hundredths. Uh, and its direction angle <clears throat> is 188.4 degrees. This is going to be a calculator problem here. So we got 53.42 times the cosine of 188.4. That's going to be a horizontal component. And then our vertical component will be 53.42 times times the sine of 188. And 188, uh, 188 degrees is in quadrant three, so we're kind of expecting both of our components to be negative here, which uh, they both are. All right, so just scoot, scooch that over a little bit, and we get roughly negative 52.84, rounds up to seven, and then the other one would be negative seven point uh, 804. Okay, uh, with H, um, last one for number four, and then we'll wrap it up with number five. Our, this is going to be a non calculator problem. We don't need a calculator for this one. Um, our magnitude is two, not 20, <laughs> but two. And um, our angle measure is going to be 4 pi over 3. This is going to be an angle measure that we can find on the unit circle so we can evaluate sine and cosine of that uh, angle measure relatively easily. The cosine of 4 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half. And the sine of 4 pi over 3 will be negative the square root of 3 over 2. And so when I multiply the 2 by 1 half, you're just going to get negative 1. Here, when I multiply 2 by something over 2, like the 2s will cancel out, basically. And so this will be, this turns out to be negative 1 and negative root 3. So that's how you uh, will find a vector given its magnitude and direction angle. So a bunch of examples here. These four on the left column, you need to use a calculator. These four on the right column, you don't really need a calculator. You just use the unit circle to evaluate those trig values. Um, but let's look, take a look at number five. Last, last section here. We want to find the sum or the difference of the vectors and then calculate the resultant vector. This is going to be very similar to what we did up in the beginning for number one. Okay, we already did a bunch like this. Um, so this might be a little little overkill here. I uh, do want to kind of fix these little symbols here just so you know you don't get confused here. I'm not sure why it printed out like this. Okay, so number five we've got A plus B um, and just uh, you know for me I like to write them as 
you know, right now they're in linear combination form. Um, just kind of me, I, I kind of like to write them as uh, a, in component form. So I'm just going to rewrite them like this, just to kind of look at them a little easier. Come on in, Lincoln. We've got to run in here. I can't put in my whole shirt because this button is missing and I don't want to wipe that. Uh, here, you're missing a hole here. <laughs> There we go. Would you like to come see what's going on over here? Okay. All right. But they still need a button to what's that you're, you're, you're a mess. So what are you doing? I am making a video. We're doing some homework problems. Trying to start something in. Oh. Would you like to see yourself? You got to sit up a little bit more. Uh, I know. Okay. There's more on the bottom. Yeah, we got a bunch of buttons here. Mm. I'll cut out this part of the video for the final final deal. <laughs> All right, do you want to say anything to my classes? No. Just say hello. No. Okay, say bye bye. No, nothing. Nothing. Okay. There you go. You're good. What do you say? Thank you, Dad. This is donated buttons. You can do the rest. All right. Anyway, so I uh, have to remember to cut that 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 out. Uh, we got negative two, five, and we've got five negative one. Okay. So if we're gonna do a plus b, I'm just gonna stack a and b. So I'm gonna stack two, three. Um. O, uh, over angle, or not angle, but vector B, which is one, negative three. And it looks like we're adding them. So we get three comma zero, and that is gonna be the resultant vector. Now it also asks us to sketch um, and it's a good idea just so you can kind of get an idea of like why this is happening But uh, let's let's do a little sketch here Like so you can visually see that this is in fact going to be the result So the first vector is 2 comma 3 so 2 Comma 3 The next one is 1 negative 3 so I'm going to start not at the origin But I'm going to start where this terminal point was and I'm going to go one to the right and then three down. I'm just gonna put me right here, and then my resultant vector starts at the very beginning and ends at the very end, which does end at three comma zero. For B, we've got W, which is five negative one, and B, which is one negative three. So arithmetically, when we combine these, we should get, what's that gonna be, six? Ah, what the? Nope, okay. We got six, negative four. And uh, again, we wanna represent this graphically as well. So five, negative one. One, two, three, four, five, negative one. Um, the first vector, vector W is gonna be here. And then when I add B to that, I'm gonna go to the right one and then down three. It's from here, so to the right one, down three, is gonna put me here, which is exactly uh, at Four, I'm sorry, six, negative four, right? Six, negative four. Okay, so the blue one here is the, like this is the A plus B, A plus B. This one is W plus B. Um, so like here's A, gonna, gonna get kind of messy in here, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, okay, so let's do the last one and then we'll be done for today. Finally, gosh, this, this homework video's gone on long enough. Okay, so B is one, negative three, 
and then w is 5, negative 1. Didn't even reference v in any of these. <laughs> Not sure why that's even there. Um, I guess just to throw you off, I don't know. Whoever wrote this homework needs to... Uh... Okay, anyway, yeah, it's me. All right, so we've got... Oh, wait, we're not adding here. We are subtracting. So we've got to make sure to subtract these columns. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And then negative 3 minus negative 1 would be equivalent to negative 3 plus 1. So that would be negative 2. All right, now the way you would sketch a subtraction versus uh, an equation is you would actually draw um, like the opposite vector here. So we would actually sketch negative five, positive one um, since we're subtracting it uh, to get to where we wanna go. So let me just kind of show you what that looks like. So we're going to start at 1, negative 3. So here's 1, negative 3. And then, you know, we're not adding 5, negative 1, we're subtracting it. So, you know, it's kind of like adding the opposite, like adding the negative version of it. So we're actually going to go to the left 5. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll actually go up 1. So left 5, up 1. One way to interpret this is like, here's B, this right here is negative U, or negative W. And so the resultant vector should be negative four comma negative two. This is the B minus W. Okay, well, that's it for today. Um, Y'all have a great day and I'll see you next time.